Today we're going to be talking about something that I think is rather exciting and is a really a revolution in medicine taking place before our eyes. Today we're going to t be talking about genomics, and I'm going to give you four companies in this field that you can consider for investing. Now, just to make sure that we all understand what it is we're talking about, let's talk about genetics and genomics really quickly. So genetics is a term that refers to the study of a gene and its roles and in inheritance, essentially how certain traits or conditions are passed down from one generation to another. That may take you back to Gregor Mendel and his study of pea plants from your high school biology days. Now, genomics is a term that describes the study of all of a person's genes and how those genes interact with each other and with the person's environment. Now, why should we care about genomics? Well, according to the NIH, genomic factors play a role in nine of the 10 leading causes of death in the United States. We're talking about diseases such as heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Okay, enough of the biology lesson for now. If you watch CNBC or Bloomberg, you may have seen Kathy Wood talking about genomics and a genomic revolution. In fact, her company, ARK Investing, has created an ETF strictly for uh, genomics and medical therapies. At the end of this presentation, I'll show you a spreadsheet that shows the 50 or so companies that she's investing in in this ETF. But we're talking about things like DNA sequencing, gene editing, gene therapy, uh, targeted therapeutics, molecular diagnostics. And so today I want to give you four companies that I think are worth your consideration if you would like to break into this exciting new area of investing. In fact, Kathy Wood essentially considers this the fang stocks of the future. It was founded back in the 1990s as a company called Genetics, spelled with an X at the end. In 2010, they became Bluebird, so they've been functioning under this name for about 10 years, and they are just now getting into a stage where they're going to start producing products. In fact, they have one product that is now on the market in Europe. Here are some of their product candidates. And this one that you can see the furthest arrow on, Zinteglo, is a treatment for beta thalassemia. Now, it's been approved in Europe. The FDA hasn't quite approved it yet. They essentially want Bluebird to prove that the manufacturing process that they use during their clinical trials will be the same manufacturing process that is used for the approved medication. And because of COVID, this approval process with the FDA is being slowed down, and it looks like it won't be until 2022 that it might be approved in the United States. The amazing thing about this particular medication, besides its cost, we're talking more than a million dollars, the, the amazing thing about this medication, though, is it can be a one-time treatment. Patients get this drug once, and it can potentially cure their problems with beta thalassemia, which is an inherited blood disorder. If we move down here just a little bit, you can see some of the clinical uh, phase and preclinical phase drugs that they have in the works as well for cancer. So let's just take a look at how Bluebird stock has been doing. In the early part of this year before the pandemic hit full phase, Bluebird made it up to almost $100 a share. It rapidly plummeted like many of the other stocks during the pandemic and then made a nice little comeback not quite to its previous share price, and then it has been drifting downwards. And this means a potential buying opportunity. This downward drift in biopharmaceutical companies when their drugs don't get approved is very common. In this case, the drug hasn't been disapproved. They just want more information from the company. And the fact that it's already been approved in Europe is encouraging. On top of that, I showed you that list of the many other drugs that they have in the works. And if all of those, or even some of those, make it to market, you can see how Bluebird stands to make a lot of money. Next, I want to talk to you about CRISPR Therapeutics. CRISPR Therapeutics was founded by the man who actually created this process of uh, gene editing using the CRISPR technique. He received a Nobel Prize for this work. What this company does is bring in an mRNA guide, this part that you can see here in blue, to bring in another protein, this part that you can see here in red, the CRISPR protein, to be able to cut a specific spot on one's DNA, this part that you can see here in green. By making this cut, a few things can happen. They can disrupt this gene's function, they can delete the gene, or they can correct or insert a new gene. When they do this, it makes a double-stranded cut in the DNA, and then the DNA has to be able to repair itself. So they, too, are also working on hemoglobinopathies. 
uh, things that make red blood cells not function correctly. Now their approach to this is by increasing fetal hemoglobin. And just for the sake of interest, you may be thinking, what is fetal hemoglobin? Well, you can see here from this graph that when we're in utero, the type of hemoglobin that our red blood cells have is fetal hemoglobin. It's different than the adult form. As one gets close to birth, the adult form starts to increase and the fetal form decreases, such that by six months after birth, there is very little fetal hemoglobin remaining. Stem cells are cells that aren't well differentiated and can continue to reproduce themselves, so that if a stem cell is altered, its future product line will also be altered permanently. They harvest those stem cells, apply the CRISPR process to them, create an edited gene for producing more fetal hemoglobin. They freeze that and test it, and then they send it back to be infused into the patient. Sounds kind of magical, doesn't it? Here's what CRISPR has in its pipeline. The process I just discussed is in clinical trials. And then we can see that they have some immuno-oncology uh, drugs also in clinical trials. Essentially, they create some T cells that have the ability to recognize cancer proteins, and they put those back into a patient's body. And those T cells can then go and directly attack the cancer cells. Now let's talk about another genomic company that is taking a little bit different approach to their process. It's called Beam Therapeutics. The ticker symbol is B-E-A-M, so that's easy to remember. They have a process that they call base editing. Now what's different about their process? Well, I explained to you that with the CRISPR technique, it makes a double-stranded break in the DNA that then needs to be repaired. Now Beam Therapeutics is taking a different approach. They're using a process they call gene editing. Gene editing can essentially edit just a single base in the DNA. Now taking it back to that high school biology, you, remember, you may remember that DNA is made up of four different proteins. Uh, they're represented here by the A, the T, the G, and the C. Rather than making large-scale cuts within the DNA, their process can actually just change one of those base pairs to a different base pair. This allows them not to make a double-stranded break in the DNA and avoid some of those things that can occur during that DNA repair process. Here's how they employ their gene editing process to here's how they employ their gene editing process to create precise, predictable, and efficient genetic outcomes. Gene correction, they take an abnormal protein, and they swap out an A for a G, and they end up with a protein that functions. Gene modification, they can take a baseline protein that is functioning, modify it, and change its function. Gene activation is essentially that. You know, we all have some genes that might not necessarily be expressed, but using their process, they can then elevate the expression of certain proteins in our body that might be effective at fighting disease. Similarly, they can take a gene and silence it, and they can also edit multiple genes simultaneously. You might be thinking, well, they've already made their run. Why would I want to purchase this? Well, I don't think this stock is finished with its run. In fact, I think uh, the run is just beginning. I see this stock potentially doubling within the next year. If we look at some of their financials, they are not yet making money. They lost $110 million in 2018. They dropped that down to $80 million in 2019. And of course, that money-making process is really going to depend upon their drugs being approved for use. Nevertheless, looking at analyst recommendations, you can see for the last one made here in November, they were strong buy and buy. $90 for this stock may ultimately prove to be a fantastic bargain. If you're not interested in it now, at least keep an eye on it. If it makes a little dip like it did just a few days ago, you might become more interested in this stock. The last company I want to talk to you about is called Illumina. Why do I think this company is interesting? Well, they essentially are the support company for all of these other genomic companies. They make the products that the other companies use to do their research and develop therapeutic drugs. I read an article that talked about how they had 75% of the market share when it comes to producing the machines involved with genomics. They have their hands in lots of areas. They make cancer research products. They make reproductive health products. They make genetic and rare disease products. 
and they make microbial genomic products. Recently, they are acquiring Grail, which is a liquid biopsy company. One of the other videos that I did talked about Garden Health, which is another liquid biopsy company and is also in the genomics arena. And now Illumina will be able to compete with Garden Health when it comes to liquid biopsy. Here is how Illumina's stock has been doing over the past 12 months. It's reached a high of about $400 during the summertime and then came down below 300 and has been slowly making its way back up. Now one of the reasons that its stock price went down was because the research being done with their products also declined during this COVID pandemic. Thus their revenue declined and their stock price declined. But I see this stock making its way back up to 400 and most likely beyond that. The bar graph here reflects what I just stated. The bar graph here shows what I just stated, showing in green their revenue and in yellow their net income. Obviously, in the second quarter of 2020, both of those took a steep decline, followed in step with their stock price. How do the analysts feel about this stock? Nobody is saying sell in December. Everyone is at hold, buy, or strong buy. I think it's worth considering given the explanation for why their stock price has come down recently. Lastly, I told you that I would show you the companies that ARC Investing has within their ARC Genomic Revolution ETF. And even this list is not by any means all-inclusive. These are the 52 companies in her ETF. I like this spreadsheet, which you can download readily from their website, because it also shows the percent weight. Leading her list is Pacific Biosciences of California. Second is CRISPR Therapeutics, which I talked to you about. And down there at number 35 is Beam Therapeutics. Now, this is not all just genomic companies. Number six there says Teladoc. They don't have anything to do with genomics as far as I know, but they are part of that revolution in medicine. I will probably have some more genomic companies in my future videos because, again, this is such an exciting, revolutionary part of medicine, the future of medicine. So the four companies that I presented to you today in this genomic arena, Bluebird, ticker symbol B-L-U-E, Beam Therapeutics, ticker symbol B-E-A-M, CRISPR Therapeutics, ticker symbol C-R-S-P, Illumina, ticker symbol I-L-M-N. And if you don't want to shop individually in this genomic arena, you can always just buy the ARC Genomic Revolution ETF, ticker symbol A-R-K-G. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. In fact, it's Christmas tomorrow. We'd love nothing better for Christmas then to receive a thumbs up and receive you as a new subscriber if that applies to you. Until the next time, have a Merry Christmas, and man, enjoy your investing.